in Apitaki in the main village on a mooring ball. I'm about to let go of that mooring ball and head to uh, Rangaroa, which is 81 miles west of here. Should be fun. Boats with my kind of keel and rudder shown here can't steer in reverse without more boat speed than is usually safe, so to get out of this somewhat tight area, I do what is essentially parallel parking for boats. This consists of motoring forwards until you get close to your obstacle, stopping the boat by using reverse, and then once stopped, I put the boat under forward using a high RPM, because the boat can rotate when in forward gear even with no boat speed. It also doesn't hurt that Hooligan is closer to the size of a bathtub than it is to most of the sailboats down here. was easy. Um, no wind, so just a little bit of current and I turned around without even having to uh, parallel park too many times. So now I'm just heading straight for Rangaroa using the autopilot, of course. Thank goodness for the autopilot. And then, yeah, it should be sometime tomorrow morning I'll get there. Finally left the boat yard and the atoll called Apotaki that the boat has been hauled out for for the past three and a half months now. Um, conditions now are absolutely perfect, maybe one foot waves, 12 knots of wind on the side. I'm just going towards Rangaroa, which is 81 miles away, that's the destination. Should be showing up there tomorrow morning. It's supposedly one of the best dive sites in French Polynesia, so I'm excited for that. And. I'm picking up my new engine that they sent me to Apataki, but it was the wrong one, so they're shipping it to Rangaroa right now, so I gotta go over there for that as well. And then, yeah, it should be a good time. About eight hours in, roughly halfway there as well, and uh, I've just been kind of hanging out inside to avoid sunburn. And yeah, it's been really nice. I didn't expect wind, which is a nice surprise. It's perfect wind. The forecast didn't show it, but you never complain about that. And we should be arriving sometime tomorrow morning around 6 a.m. The atoll passes in the Tuamotu Islands can produce extreme tidal currents, so it's important to enter and exit the atolls at slack when the tide is neither going in or out to avoid dangerous standing waves. The Tiputa Pass in Rangiro is especially infamous because it's the largest atoll in this area, therefore the most water has to leave the pass on an outgoing tide. The wind can also oppose the current here, which makes things even worse. It's 5.40 a.m. February 17th. Just getting ready to enter the pass to Rangaroa now, after an overnighter from off Jockey. Um, I'm hoping I got the current right. This pass can be kind of sketchy because it's a swell exposed pass, but I think it should be incoming, which will mean the waves are flat, hopefully. And yeah, I'll see how it goes. I had someone with me for part of this video to help with night watches between these holes because sleep here isn't really an option, but at the time of posting this video I'm back to being alone on the boat. Made it through the pass, uh, the current was actually outgoing pretty strong so I was going about one and a half knots the whole time which isn't ideal but it turned out fine. The wind is pretty light so the waves weren't huge. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep motoring forward from here and try to find a place to anchor and hopefully not catch on a bomb. Here's a little breakdown of how anchoring the boat usually goes. So first I lock the tiller in place so the boat doesn't go to one side or the other. Then I run out to the front and I manually let the chain out at first and get it through the bow roller. Both of these things need to be fixed because the windlass is broken and the anchor swivel doesn't fit through the roller. So I drop the chain until it touches the bottom and then because I'm in the two emojis I have to float the chain or else it'll catch on coral bombies, which are big heads of coral that come up from the bottom. You can see here I put this big pink float on first. It's the biggest one, so it goes on first. And then I put the next two. Most people only use two, but I really don't like catching the coral and wrecking it, so I do three.
this is what's called a snubber. It goes on the anchor chain to the cleat and makes sure there's some stretch in the system so that it doesn't pull directly on the chain to the windlass because that just adds extra wear and tear to the system. And here's some footage of the chain being held off the bottom by the floats. So that's good. First run with the new outboard. Super happy about this. I've been severely limited by my previous outboard and my sailing so far, so it's great to have one that actually can take me places. I lost about half the footage from this entire YouTube video, so it's cut a little bit different than it should have been. But here I'm just going to get some diesel and fuel for the dinghy and also go grocery shopping. Believe it or not, this is the best selection of fruit I've ever seen here by about five times. Alright, the grocery slash fuel run was successful. Uh, the amount of money it costs here just to get some adventure fuel is horrendous. I think it was like 135 bucks for 10 gallons of diesel and what was it? Uh, 9 gallons of gasoline, but it is what it is can't not buy it and the current is really strong right now um, the old thingy just wouldn't have been able to power against this so I'm glad I have the new one it literally just wouldn't be able to gonna get back to the boat and pick up anchor head to the next spot 